You're watching Escape Adulthood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about breaching whales, inventing sandwiches, and believing in fantastic things. Greetings and salutations, everyone. This episode is brought to you by people like Mike Barnes, Jody Brown, and Divine Holly. Their membership in the Wonder and Wonder Society supports us in this work to fight adultitis. Thank you, guys. Yes, if you'd like to annihilate the adultitis in your life, learn more about the Wonder and Whimsy Society or be among the first to know about our newest offerings, become an insider at escapeadulthood.com slash subscribe. Indeed. Hey, happy hump day, everybody. And I, apparently we're hungry tonight because I, I was not hungry until I sat down and started to read all you guys. <laughs> it's awesome. So, Dave, what is... What is a Rachel? Jason said he thinks it's like the compliment to a Reuben. Yes. So tell we us asked, more. Uh, again, in the pre-show, for those of you watching yeah. the, uh, you, you, you always jump off t- 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 like this non sequitur of like, it's actually, hey, everyone, what's your, like. It's an advantage of coming live. Is, you get to is. see what we're talking so about. For, for people who are wondering, <laughs> in the pre-show, we uh, have a question while people are uh, assembling. And we asked, what's your favorite sandwich? And uh, yeah, uh, Dave said the Rachel. And I think that has something no to do with, uh, with the Reuben, I think. So uh, tell I'm us. I'm not sure tell if it's like yes. a Victoria, version or a different version. Victoria, meatball sandwich can't is go always going to be meatball sandwich. Uh, I didn't know this was called a Irish grilled cheese, but it has amazing. bacon and tomatoes. So, yes. Yes. That sounds um, so good. Oh, here we, go. here we go. Sister sandwich to a Reuben turkey instead of corned beef. Ooh. All right. All right. Interesting. Rachel. Got it. I do like my corned beef, though. <sighs> But turkey, I mean, you can't go can't wrong go with wrong. turkey. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with grilled, grilled cheese. cheese. We approve of that here in Wisconsin. For sure. <laughs> um, love it. Love it. So and we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, sandwiches even more later. So stick around for that. Uh, but other big news. This is show number 98. 98, you guys. I mean, come on. Feeling old. <laughs> I know. Feeling old. Uh, I'm aging by the minutes here. Yeah. Next week is show number 99, and uh, it's also the final episode of the season. We'll be taking a uh, short, relatively short uh, summer break, mm-hmm. um, and we're, we've are we got some special things planned for our 99th show, a couple tricks up our sleeve, so you are going to want to be here right on the dot to, yeah. see, uh, to see that. And uh, when we come back after uh, our summer break, there's going to be some changes, uh, some big, exciting things. Uh, we're we're, we're, we're uh, talking about mixing things up a little bit, and uh, we're excited about that. And uh, possibly times, dates, stuff may or may not change. Um but we'll be back, and it's going to be new and improved. Is that a good way to say yes, it, Yes, right? new and improved, right. And as with anything, like, you know, when you guys turn have those big birthdays or big anniversaries, we kind of looked at this as an opportunity to say, now that this has happened, now that we have 99 shows, what does this make possible? And I think there's some cool things in the works that you'll be excited yeah, about. Absolutely. So, so. you're definitely going to uh, be an insider. Go to escapeitallwho.com slash insider. To make sure you keep abreast of all of the things going on. Uh, speaking of things going on, we've got some more exciting oh, news to share. Yes. As uh, some of you know, the loyal uh, watchers have uh, know that we're in the midst of a studio renovation, uh, building uh, my dream studio. Basically, uh, I've been doing a lot of pondering about this, and and uh, my entire life, I was thinking about my very first art table I bought when I was in either high school or early college. And I feel like it was felt like a mortgage. You know how like when you're young, you, you make a big purchase and you have to save up for it. And uh, I recently retired that because I bought a new one. But that that art table followed me. It was in my bedroom, followed me to college, to the dorm room and to our second bedroom of our apartment. And my studio has always been uh, mostly cramped into some extra space. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, at long last, we we're uh, blessed to be able to 
built out uh, what's pretty much been my dream studio for 25 years, I'd say. So it's we're making progress. together. I know. And we have a video, right? We do. Yay. We do. So let's, uh, let's show the fine folks at home where we're at these days. back again with another look at the progress of this studio renovation. Uh, one of the exciting things that happened was the carpet was removed. Uh, there was a green carpet, hunter green. I'm sure it was <laughs> Terrible. wonderful when it was installed uh, 30 years ago. Uh, it wasn't quite the look I was going for. So that was kind of cool to finally get that out of here. But the most uh, amazing thing that happened that, that probably is the biggest difference to date that makes me feel like what this will actually feel like without just having to imagine it in my head is the wall came down. They put the whole, in our house, this was an exterior wall here that finally got removed and it opens up the entire space so I can finally now see what the room will look like. And, um, one of the things my dad said as this project would go along is that there'd be parts where it would feel big and then parts where it would feel small and then big again and small. And now it's, it's back to being big. So we have the walls up, the walls closed in, windows put in. Uh, that one was, the top one was measured incorrectly. So there's a new one coming. That one is still a door for the contractor. Uh, but the windows are in, the skylights are in. Um, a lot of progress has been made. The roof has been shingled. Um, so now it's really just fun. I love coming in here every day, just looking at it and imagining the next steps and what things will look like. Um, next up here is the electrician needs to get in here and uh, put in the lights and ceiling fan and all the stuff. And then uh, once that happens, then there'll be another flurry of activity with the drywall and flooring and all that kind of stuff. So uh, super excited. It is uh, still painfully slow. Uh, I, I would love to have this done yesterday, but I am excited about the progress and uh, thrilled to be able to show it to you. And now a word from our staff. Well, what do you, go. what do you, I mean, is, I, I know that this has been painful process. I mean, you'd think it'd be exciting, but there, when it's something, maybe you guys can relate to this for like, a big event that co was coming up, whether you're quitting a job or getting married or having a baby, like all these things, like it's kind of painful. It's like exciting, but painful. Is that a good yeah, way to you know, it? It's, it does, it, you know, you talk about the, the baby thing is interesting because there's usually a due date. And in our case, <laughs> usually, yeah, <laughs> in our case, we didn't, uh, we didn't have any inducing. So there wasn't like a scheduled uh, delivery. But there's a, there's always a due date, and but you never quite know. And then when you get past the due date, then it's like pins and needles. So you know things like weddings and graduations. There's dates yeah, attached. Yeah, that's to a them. good point. And you know when it is. This what's been hard about this is I've had to like mentally pretend like it's never going to happen because I can't. It's too hard to not know the day. Yeah, right? like, I bet others with building <laughs> projects can relate to this because that is a thing, especially yeah. in the last two years with contractors and builders being so overworked, right? Of like you have a project, but good luck if it's six months, right? Yeah, and it, and I mean, there's there was a lot of pro progress that you just saw happened within the course of a week. Yeah. And then pretty much this week, nothing because we're waiting on the electrician's right. schedule to free up. So, yeah. you know, you're all like, oh, it's happening, it's happening. And then it's like nothing. So... Uh, obviously this is as close as it's ever been and now I can, can see it, but, um, Ooh, good question uh, from the Kotechis. And are you sharing this yet? Uh, will my mm. studio have a name? Yes, it will. I, uh, I read a book, uh, about a year ago of a guy who had uh, his office and he named it and it was like, that's cool. Almost like a ship, right? So mm -hmm. it is, there is a name. I am not going to uh, share it yet. But yes, there's yes, a name. There is. And Dave, and, uh, this is interesting. Yeah, I remember you having this project. You said, when they built my sunroom, it was awful. You learn about patience. I know. Yes. It's You kind of feel bad for feeling awful because it's so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, Kelsey says, it's better to not expect so you can't get disappointed. I we know. Had a hard time when we built out our office two months later. 
Yeah. It's uh, it, 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 it is weird to, it's you feel like you're such a negative emotions. Nelly, but it's also, there's a certain self-protection. So excited to be able to share that with you uh, more as we go along. But uh, we do have a, a word from our sponsor yes, to, to pay for all of this, <laughs> this construction. And now a word from our sponsors. All right, you guys, I am excited to share that as of tonight and an email I received, we have two bookings left for 2022. So woohoo! The, the, the gigs are back. I mean, it's, it is neat to see virtual is still happening and hybrid and everything else. But Jason is getting on the road um, and they'll be on the road a lot this fall. So it's kind of exciting to see mm -hmm. um, events back up and we're excited to, to be out there sharing our message again with live audiences, which has been something that I know you've missed a lot. Yes, it is uh, fun to be back uh, doing things. We've got some uh, programs lined up in the next few months that I'm excited about because I'm bringing the kids with me. So each of them are getting a special trip, um, which is pretty cool. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, if, for those of you who don't know, yeah, I'm I, I do keynote speeches and uh, I <laughs> this fit, was like a big deal in like 2019. Yeah, <laughs> I fit perfectly in at the beginning of the conference or at the end of a conference. I can help set the tone. We can uh, send people off on a good note. A lot of times we fit right in where you have a conference where there's a lot of continuing education, maybe some boring industry speakers that are required Important to talk about CEU uh, information. Yeah. You know. But, but I can come in, take the theme, take some of the, the elements you're talking about and uh, wrap it all together and, and make people feel good. And yeah. that's what I love to do. Give them, give them a laugh and, and inspire them. And uh, so if you know someone who is planning an event, or perhaps you are planning an event and uh, want to learn more about it, go to escape it slash speaking as Kim said, we don't have very many spots left in 2022, yeah. but we are booking into 2023 a as well. A quick test to see if Jason would be a good fit for your audience. If your audience has been or is feeling burnt out, then well, you're that, a perfect fit. <laughs> that limits the crowd. <laughs> that's, that's a good one. Yes. So check it out, skipitalhood.com slash speaking. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. My family went to Mexico to see whales. Now, that's not the only reason we went to Cabo, but then again, the whales weren't in Mexico because they were hoping to be seen. The tour company guaranteed we'd see them or our next ride was free, but we were told that we had a one in five shot of actually seeing one breach. It was recommended that we improve our odds by booking several excursions. Well, <laughs> our itinerary and budget forced us to take our chances. As we skipped across the waves on our small vessel, my little family prayed to St. Francis, the patron saint of animals, and we invoked St. Anthony with the words, Tony, Tony, look around. There is something to be found. Well, I had faith that our little excursion was in the right 20th percentile. And, you know, maybe our prayers were answered. Maybe it just turned out to be our lucky day. But we saw this guy, or gal, I forgot to check, do this several times in front of us. I use this photo that our guide took with his awesome camera as reference for this painting. Now, those fleeting moments represented a tiny fraction of our trip, but they were definitely the highlight of the whole thing. The biggest chunk of our time on that vacation was spent in and around the swimming pool. My kids could have spent the rest of their lives there if we would have let them. With the exception of me and Kim, the children were the only humans at the pool not collecting social security. They were in their own little world, lost in their imagination, playing, splashing, and floating to their heart's content. Meanwhile, our older neighbors stayed busy doing their thing, oblivious to the world of fantasy happening right in front of them. I was sad for them because they were missing out. They were nonplussed and in some cases seemed a little annoyed by the joyful noises bubbling forth from the pool. Mind you, I couldn't see everything that clearly. Adultitis has dimmed my imagination more than I'd care to admit, but I could see well enough to know that magic was happening in that pool. I witnessed an adventure, no doubt wrought with equal parts excitement and peril, and I smiled as I wondered how magnificent it must be. I know it seems unlikely, 
and I couldn't tell for sure, but I could have sworn that a giant humpback whale may have been leaping right out of that very pool. Now, don't ask the grumps around the pool to fact check my story. I'm certain they missed the whole thing. Too riddled with adultitis, no doubt. Well, that the whole scene appeared to be invisible made it no less real. Why do we stop believing in fantastic things? Why do our wide eyes grow so dim with age? Shouldn't they be even wider? For an old person has been privileged to observe an avalanche of wonders. Living long brings plenty of disappointment, to be sure, but it also brings a smorgasbord of sunrises and sunsets and more time to bear witness to impossible things like childbirth and springtime and the way green leaves turn bright red every single year. As I said, adultitis has its grip on me too, but I, I'm still fighting. I plan to fight it all the days of my life. I hope I never stop believing. Ah, oh, imagination, right? We just get a little hardened, don't we? Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of interesting. I don't know. If, I mean, this was a couple years ago when we made this trip, but I I, I remember the kids being so active yeah. in the pool and so you, stuff was going on. Stuff was going on, and like literally every other person was just like. <laughs> reading their book like nothing and you know i i understand that is they don't care about our kids and they're no. doing their own thing they're on right. their vacation but it just struck me as really fascinating like man there's there's pirate ships here there's whales jumping out of there's <laughs> stuff happening and 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 no one else can see it and uh i think that's the 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 sad thing is that uh i think why we lose that creativity we we forget to believe in impossible things and that's how we make the world better is being open to impossible things actually happening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And here I see Christy Ward's on tonight. I know you know this better than probably most people who are watching live tonight of this magic because she works with these Sherpas every day. Mm -hmm. uh, the magic that happens, you know, right in between here. And if you just give them the space, they'll just take it and they'll run with it. So it's kind of neat to, to walk in their shoes for a few minutes. Yeah. And know? try to do whatever we can to bring a little bit of a little bit of that back. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, uh, here's our meme of the week. When you realize that place where you swim is the <laughs> toilet of this creature. I know you like uh, that guy. That guy, uh, that guy is in good. a lot of different memes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of a weird thing, isn't it? Whether it's the oh, yeah. lake or it's ocean. It's so big. Stuff, I don't but, know. I don't you know. think it's much about that. No. There's probably the ratio is probably worse than a real swimming pool. <laughs> probably. It's probably true. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you don't need all that chlorine. There's a reason that chlorine uh, is in there, right? Right. So, uh, yeah, that, that That's made me one. chuckle. Mm -hmm. uh, so, anyway, uh, this uh, this month, and I, I don't have the card with me, but uh, Wonder and Whimsy Society members uh, receive a secret mission by mail every month and uh, has something to fight adultitis. But the thing is, is that the message, the challenge is encrypted in a secret code that only Wonder and Whimsy members can break. And uh, is it last month, uh, I think? May. I think it was May. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, challenge was to invent a sandwich and name it after someone. It could be someone real, someone fictional, whatever. And, uh, By the way, Wonder Whimsy Society members, did you like the little flag we included? Was yes. that rad? So that, We're so excited about that. We're so nerdy about it. That's the other thing. In our quarterly mailings, yeah. we have uh, something in a secret little envelope or package that you can't open up until next month's secret mission. And there was a little, one of those little flags that you can little write sandwich on. Sandwich flag. You'll see that. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we had fun doing this challenge, uh, inventing a sandwich. It was interesting. Well, uh, part of it was uh, inspired because uh, Kim was doing some yard work in our backyard and stumbled upon what, Kim? Yes, morel mushrooms, which I know some of you guys follow on social. So you saw that. Cause I was just so geeked out, honestly, of like, Oh my gosh, here's, we saw them last year. We weren't quite sure we did the research, but we kind of missed it because we were new here. So this year I was looking and I'm like, okay, where are they? What did I find about 10 and one, At least, one yeah. was, you know, from the bottom to the top about five inches. So I was like, so nerdy about this. You guys, wasn't I, I was yeah, hunting. It was, it was I was like, exciting. 
really excited. So we had fun with the, uh, the inspiration of a new ingredient because let's be honest, we don't buy these at the store. Um, they're pretty pricey. Yeah, they're we like saw the, 50, $50 a pound. In for, Seattle. Yeah. Yes. The, at the Pike Place Market, yeah. they were selling them for $50 a pound. So yeah. Um, we, the kids were all, the kids, we've trained them all. The kids are all like, why are we not selling these? Why are we, <laughs> we, should like, a, we should not eat these. We, we should, should have a morale them. stand. And, uh, if you've ever had, if you like mushrooms, they don't all, like them. So, you know, that helps. Morels are like yeah. the caviar of mushrooms. I don't, I've never had caviar. I don't know that I would yeah. like it, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's like the next level. And, uh, so I want, we wanted to come up with something that would maybe incorporate them. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, I, I was thinking about morel mushrooms and I could not keep out of my head my fifth grade teacher whose name uh, is Mrs. Morell. <laughs> she's still alive, but uh, Mrs. Morell was changed her name. my fifth so grade you should teacher. Say... No, I stalked her on Facebook. <laughs> I found her. Uh, she lives in California now. Um, and yeah, she was my fifth grade teacher. And uh, uh -huh. first teacher, uh, fifth grade was when we moved into junior high. It was like, I guess, middle school now for whatever they call yeah, it. But it was like with the big kids. And uh, I... I was like, well, this we should name this after Mrs. Morell. And so then since she was my fifth grade teacher, I'm like, how can we incorporate five? And so I, I, I thought of the idea of having five cheeses. So this is the this is the trading card that Wonder and Whimsy Society members get. And here is the Mrs. Morell. Uh, and it is a it is a cheeseburger, five cheeses. Five, you guys. Five. five uh, so cheeses. If you're, if you're counting at home, we have Parmesan. Mozzarella, cheddar, smoked provolone, and uh, which Ooh. one am I missing? Oh, American, the classic. Oh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the so that one. was our, yeah. that's the Mrs. Morel right there. The, I mean, the cheese was like that thick, you guys. I mean, it was almost as big as the burger, which yeah. was, I, I appreciated. Yeah, I, mean, I, I was surprised at how... It was cheesy, but it wasn't like over. Well, right? I think that or honestly, the or flavor of the morels were pretty significant. Yeah, that, so helped, that helped. That really that was, was fighting for that cheese um, flavor. So we, and Arby's fries, by the way, you can get those in the store. They're pretty awesome. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, as it turned out, the kids uh, didn't have five cheeses. I only had two slices of mozzarella. <laughs> So they got. I don't know clicked. if their stomachs could handle uh, five cheese. I wanted to call out Ben's. I thought Ben's was pretty creative. He Aww. created it was the cheese monster, the cheese monster. So mm -hmm. it, it only had four cheeses, but he only added the uh, the curly fry on top, which I thought was a nice touch, right? Has anyone said it only had four cheeses? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's if you like a cheeseburger with I only mean, four only cheeses, four. Like, you do you, I guess, I, right? Yeah. Um, some of you are like, Gross. that's just too much cheese. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I'm talking about. That's how we roll in Wisconsin. Yes. All right. Well, I wanted to call attention to some of the Wonder and Whimsy Society members' creations because they are equally as good. Yes. So Julie Brown's The Dave. This is oh. The Dave. And uh, she had her little flag here. Uh, she said it was in inspired by a former coworker who unfortunately passed away oh. last year while he was in his 40s. Oh. Um, but she made this first iteration of her stuffed antipasto sandwich in 2016 mm. for his going away party. And uh, they were reminded of how much they loved that first one. So she included the same ingredients, but then it has twice as many meats, uh, plus pepperoncini slices, green olive tapenade, and artichoke hearts. Wow. Uh, and it's the it's date. Legit, it's the date. So there's no messing around there. I love that it was like in honor of him. Yeah, That's it was pretty cool. cool. Then we got yeah. Scott and Sharon Sloppy Drunk Joe. <laughs> say that 10 times fast <laughs> and it's made with scott's homemade hard cider oh that pretty good sloppy joe made with hard cider oh yeah. uh, she said it's partially named after my brother's friend joe who is quite a drinker but amazingly zen about life so <laughs> that seemed delicious and uh that looks delicious kara yeah. and paul put together the sloppy joey guacamole oh joey guacamole and, uh, <laughs> It was uh, it was uh, delicious. They they are vegetarian vegetarian, so this was made with impossible meat, nice. and that guacamole looks, looks pretty amazing. good. Amazing! Uh, yeah, we have featured Kara's vehicle on her show. I've actually ridden in it. Oh. Come on! Yeah, Come take on. that! Fair. Take that! That is Joey guacamole. So take that! That is, that. <laughs> that is the uh, inspiration uh. there. 
Then we've got uh, Martha Henderson's Sam Vimes BLT. Mm. And uh, it's inspired by a quote from one of her favorite characters from Thud, which is a book by Der Terry Pratchett. The quote is, Vimes carefully lifted the top of the bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich and smiled inwardly. Good old Cherry. She knew what a Vimes BLT was all about. It was about having to lift up quite a lot of crispy bacon before you found the miserable, skulking vegetables. <laughs> you might never notice them at all. And that I gotta tell you, epic, a lot of people in right? our pre-show said they loved the BLT, and I've never, like, it's not my thing, but I realized when I saw the sandwiches because they, they skimp on the B. They do they skimp, skimp on the B. On the B. This is <laughs> We're a not BLT. talking about the bun. I can get Although behind. this bun is pretty impressive, too. You throw five cheeses on here, you've got yourself a sandwich. <laughs> you've got yourself a, what, uh, Irish? Uh, grilled cheese? Grilled cheese, well, mm. yeah. Under construction, <laughs> and uh, last but certainly not least, if we're if we're talking heart attacks, uh, we're gonna bring up Rich's Porky Pig. Oh man, you get, Rich. are you ready for this? I don't know if I am. That looks like at least five meats. The, at least, uh, try more. Oh, All right. <laughs> we've got uh, pork tenderloin, spam. Oh, mm -hmm. my dad's ears just perked up. <laughs> Canadian bacon. Pulled pork, ham, and of course bacon. Oh, plus a few yeah. pickles and some apple pigs radish coleslaw. Running. Yeah, how, how many, many pigs, pigs were killed I to make this sandwich? <laughs> uh, oh, it's pretty good. It's man. pretty good. So uh, kudos to all of you who uh, who have been playing along with this month's secret mission. It's been fun. Put up Dave's comment there. Is that one up there yet? Uh, I didn't. I didn't see it. My sandwich is called Cheeses of Nazareth. That might be the best name. That might might be the best name. Well How done. many cheeses is in that sandwich? I want to know. Twelve, uh, maybe. Yeah. This was, Seven. This was the mace. What the numbers would you make? Yeah. So uh, yeah, well, of course, uh, you can play at home if you want to make up your own sandwich and invent it because we need more sandwich. I mean, we need more playful Just the food. segment alone shows you that there's still. Mm -hmm. Uncharted territory in the art of sandwich making. I think so. It's right? endless. Yeah. Right? It's endless. It's endless. Absolutely so. All right. Well, let's move things along. You guys get out your uh, your crayons, your pens, your pencils, your colored pencils, your your finger paint. Let's draw. All right, friends, let's get this one started. This is going to be a little bit of a different one. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to start out sort of in the middle of the paper, and we're going to draw a little uh, little, little hump there, a little curve. And then we're going to draw another one up here. And we'll draw another one here. And let's do, uh, let's do another one down here. And we'll do another one up here. Okay. Oh boy, generous. Doesn't have humps. to be. Uh, doesn't have to be perfect. We're talking about humpback whales. We got got to get some humps in here. Mm -hmm. All right. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna add. Um, we're gonna connect these. We're gonna we're gonna close this loop. Close this shape. And we're just gonna kind of draw. A, not quite as. Uh, like a humpy. turtle. Not quite as humpy, but not a straight line. A little curve to it. And we're gonna connect all of them. Mm. Like so. Okay. Interesting. All right. Now we're going to draw some uh, vertical lines as such. And they can be uh, organic, curvy. Let's probably start to give it away. In general, you can kind of have the bottom part uh, a little bit wider. And we're going to do that for all five of them. And by now you can probably tell we've got some uh, some mushrooms going on. So we're going to close those off at the bottom. And feel free to add a, some scribbles in here yeah, if you want to add a little bit of grass. Now these look like pretty good mushrooms, but we've got to uh, whimsify them. All right. 
So uh, this first one, one of the best ways I know of whimsifying anything is to put a face on it, especially if it's an inanimate object, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to draw a couple little, uh, couple little eyes, and I'm going to draw a triangle here. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to color in the bottom part as so, like a little, little dark triangle underneath. And uh, what we have here is a fun guy. Oh. Okay, we got we got a fun guy there. Yep. <laughs> All right, now over here, we're gonna draw a couple uh, a couple circles like this, and then we'll connect them. And I'm gonna draw uh, some rectangles above those circles. I'm going to draw a little smiley face. <laughs> and then I'm going to draw kind of a, a triangle down here. It's going to be kind of like a beard. Oh. Okay. Nice. And then a couple uh, couple lines that look like this, which is going to be like little Homer Simpson hair. Ah. Kind of like those are his last two little comb over. Two little hairs left. And what we have here. Oh. <laughs> Is an old guy. Oh. Got an old guy here. Got a little mushroom family. Fun coming guy, along here. old guy. All right, ready for the next one, you guys? <laughs> We're going to draw kind of a big, thick rectangle here and another big, thick rectangle. Kind of have them pointing towards the middle of the mushroom. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm going to put a couple eyes under there. And then I'm going to put an, an upside down frown. He's not happy. Okay, and then he's going to have <laughs> over here, we're going to do a line with some little lines. Oh this is a little scar. Oh. And we got here. We got a tough guy. Tough guy. A tough guy there. Nice. All right. Now, how about this one? Let's draw some half circles next to each other like that. And I'm going to color all of it in except a little part. I'm going to leave a little, little diagonal highlight. And I'm going to connect those two circles together. So we got some sunglasses. And we're going to do a little half smile. Not a full smile, because this guy... <laughs> this guy's a cool guy. Cool guy. That's, that's you. Cool you guy. got the cool guy smile. Cool guy smile. Mm -hmm. And we got room for one more. So uh, I think I'm going to do... <laughs> For this one, I'm going to make some X's. Uh, X's for the eyes, okay? Uh, oh, boy. And uh, I'm going to draw a line, straight line. And a little line like this. A little tiny line oh. in the middle. And what we got here, you, you hope you never have to see one of these. But this is a dead guy. Oh. Dead guy, not great. Not great, Bob. And now, now, is, now you can have fun coloring them in. Aww. And uh, you know, this is again. I always like to have some a little room for creativity. So obviously, you can draw what I just drew, or you could add your own little faces. Come up with your own versions. I can't wait to see what names that they might come up with. Right. Right. Um, I this was actually based on a really old piece of art that I did a long time ago, and I had about nine of these guys and there was one called random guy <laughs> and his <laughs> face was all messed up Aww. like his eyes were where his mouth were they be. all named they were all named really so there's random guy oh, man. uh serious guy uh, i wonder if jenna could find that artwork i bet it's on an old tumblr could be. Yeah, Could be. that would it's, be tough, Jenna. I it's on, don't it's on feel like computer, you have to, but, but I bet it's out there somewhere. It's on your computer. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this color here. I'm gonna do kind of like a oh, nice I little. Done. I forgot that the old guy. I was doing a little bit too. Uh, teenager colors. I need to make. What it. are what are teenager colors? Well, like purple oh, and blue. Okay. We're going with, uh, with that, I see. <laughs> but I kind of wanted him to be, and now I see. I want him to be like brown and kind of 
old guyish. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Well, this is uh, this is show number ninety eight. Now we we haven't done ninety eight episodes of Let's Draw because we've we've had some shows on the road where we haven't had the ability to uh, to do it every show. There have been a couple shows where you have done the drawing, and uh, <laughs> I'm I think, sorry. <laughs> I think our youngest daughter Jenny did a drawing. She one rocked time. it. She was like a fan favorite. But the reason I bring it up is because we do have a playlist, and um, it has all of the ones that we uh, we currently have, and you can. Uh, There's got to be at least check them out. 85, 90. Yeah, I would say it's in the 80s for sure. Yeah. Um, I love how Jeff said not having any fun guy. <laughs> that that's would be the one fun, I want to see. Right? Yeah, I'd like to see that one. Right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna you got to show us that, Jeff. We would love to see your not having any fun guy. Yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna add some little uh, little dots here. This one allows for a lot of creativity. It does, doesn't it? It goes well with your monologue tonight, right? Mm. Yes. Okay. So here's another here's a little tip because you know we want these to look as realistic as possible to fool people that you maybe saw them in the wild. But if you take <laughs> a a slightly darker color than whatever you use for your um, mushroom base the stem and uh, if you do a little rounded line under each one and then color that in mm. it's going to give it a little bit of that uh three-dimensional look like there's a little shadow there oh that's cool right i love that paul tracy just put up a link from free dictionary of words containing guy. Ooh. So yeah, that's this is why a we good have, hack. Right? Why we have the best audience in the world. Right? That is pretty awesome. And I can't confirm it, but I think Stephen may have found the artwork on Pinterest. Oof. That could be. That's He's got a link there. That could be the one. Fine. Oh, maybe oh, even in Flickr. Flickr too. He's Steven. busy. He's busy. Oh, man. I'm impressed. All right, Kim, how are we doing there? Oh, your dead guy is really close, dead. Right? A, I like that. Yeah, I kind of had fun with the colors there, guys. Mm -hmm. not, not a bad one. I think you could really spend some time on this if you really wanted to. Yeah, I want to see what we come up with. I can, I can tell you, even though we have some changes coming to the show... Um, let's draw is going nowhere. No, so uh, we will. We're, we're keeping that, keeping that Continue. going. Continue. Yes. Well, uh, as always, we love seeing your contributions, your versions of these. Pete Ninevesa, uh, sent in this one a couple weeks ago. We did the flying pie. I was like, even pie. the tear or not the, I go, even the raindrop smiling. And he goes, or is it drool from <laughs> the, the sun? Yeah, I was going to say, that looks like what it might be there. Right. Uh, so Pete, great job there. And then oh, uh, Kara, Kara drew these uh, adorable little uh, marshmallows jumping into the, the hot faces. chocolate from last week. Oh. Did a great job on that. And then this was kind of out of the blue. Uh, Victoria Lebowski yeah. was, uh, I, yeah. I wrote this note down so I get it right. Um, she was cleaning out a bag of old desk stuff from the job she left six, month, six months ago and found my post-it note art gallery. <laughs> That's pretty good, huh? She's got, like, so got all these uh, ones from Blast from the Past. And uh, then she's got these balloon animals. I'm like, what's the story with all these Study. balloon dogs? Yeah. Well, she said every new uh, hire class, uh, new hire, like the class of new hires, drew the balloon dog animal at some point. But I had them draw other things whenever we need a little mental floss. Beyond bringing calm, focus, and smiles to every group, we learned a lot about each other from how each individual completed their drawing. I bet. The act of sharing was a nice lesson in courage uh, for those on the more shy end of things. Hmm. So uh, she said, I'm so glad I left that job, but I love the many little mini rebellions of fun mm. I was able to work into my time there. So uh, I you, love that. Victoria. And it's a good reminder that, know. you know, we, we, we hear a lot of teachers sharing these drawings with uh, their students and, and but family here she's students using together. it and what sounded like to be like a corporate workplace, um, right? Yeah, and cool uh, everyone that? draws a little thing and then and then it, you can kind of talk about it. it's a little icebreaker. Mm -hmm. Love it. So thank you, Victoria, for uh, doing that. It kind of reminds us. me we had a speaking program this week, um, and someone in the discussion was sharing about how art, all forms, music, theater, you know, visual arts, um, is social emotional health. 
And so it's kind of neat. Like she was talking about how not all social emotional health is art, but art is so, I can't even say it. Social, emotionally healthy. Um, So I bet that was a neat break, like you said, just from everything, but also to be able to learn about each other and have that dialogue of like, oh, yours is really like this and mine's like that. I wonder why we did it differently, you know? Yeah, so uh, if you had fun drawing the mushrooms with us this week, I want to see. I know. I I want to see your mushroom family. Send them to kj at escapeadulthood.com. All right, friends, uh, here's the question of the week. You can win a prize. What creature would you like to spend an afternoon in a pool with? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that little open-ended creature. It could be creature. real. Could be a sea creature. Could be fake. Could be fictional. Whatever. Um, but what can they win, Kim? Mm, yes. Um, we have this handy-dandy little uh, gift card, $10, to our lemonade stand. Um, so, yeah, check out. Check it out. We have a lot of great things. And I think we have a, what, some, what was I thinking of? Um, it's a good story. Soft cover chairs. They're, they're, they're yeah, getting there. No, no. Okay. No, oh, yes. I don't know if That's what I was like processing. I'm like, did he say it's up there? So we soon. Sold, we sold out of the hard cover. So we're working on getting the soft covers up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Soon they will be available on the lemonade stand. So let's see what we've got here. I, I know exactly which creature I would like to spend okay. the afternoon What do you got? What do you got? Grogu. Grogu. Yes. You think Grogu's got a little swimming suit? <laughs> Think that baby like? Yoda for those of you who yeah. aren't as geeky or you um, think, because he can't just go in wearing his little cloak thing because yeah. it'll just soak up and he'll f- go right to the bottom maybe he's got little oh, good little uh, think he wears flippers or do you think his little feet are working I off? think his feet work fine interesting yeah interesting mm-hmm. all right well uh Kelsey says mermaid oh that'd mermaid. be magical no merman huh Kelsey I think With Kelsey mermaid. reminds me of a mermaid okay just because like, of her, her flowing hair. Yeah, she's Ariel. got like a mermaid vibe to her. <laughs> mermaid that's, vibe. That's a compliment. Also, her legs are a fish. He, she has no legs. No, she that's has no legs. That's the and main thing. And also gives a tip off. <laughs> <laughs> she swims with a fin. I mean. I wonder if she has one of those like clamshell bras, you think? I don't know. I don't know. Inquiring minds. <laughs> she can tell us. How about uh, how about Christy? Otters, Aww. no contest. She's all in. We, I love otters. Uh, Jeff, how's it going, Jeff? SpongeBob, SpongeBob. SquarePants. Oh, there now that would be some shenanigans. That would be. I like right? that. Uh, I love Jennifer it. Tackett says octopus. Oh, that would be cool. Rachel Beluga whale. They are Aww. so cute. There were so many memes with beluga whales. I almost, I almost really? did a beluga whale meme. Uh, but, to look uh, them up. They are, they are pretty adorable. Yes. Uh, Mary Beth Updike, who ironically has Grogu as her oh. icon <laughs> photo uh, profile picture, says Nessie. Nessie. What is Nessie? Uh, Nessie is the Loch Ness monster. Oh, okay. That's like slime. I assume. I assume that's there okay, might be a that makes cartoon character also named Nessie, but okay. that would be my guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dorothy says Aww. Elmo. <laughs> <laughs> See Elmo. Elmo would wear swimmies, wouldn't he? Like float the floaty. Yep. Things. Elmo would have flippers and swimmies and goggles. Yeah, yeah, a towel. Yeah. yeah, he would have everything. Hello, Heidi. Heidi is uh, done with the turtle. Ooh, that'd be cool. Uh, mm-hmm. Then we've got a snapping turtle. Ooh, I think this is probably my dad. I doubt my mom would want to swim with the snapping <laughs> turtle. So, uh, what else? Uh, Loch Ness monster, mm-hmm. but she has to pose for a photo. Oh, like there's that. conditions. Yeah. Yeah. How about Dobby? Dobby. 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 You can do a good Another Dobby. Dobby. What, what, Dobby what are the chances that Dobby would come in yeah. so quickly? I don't that know if that was in response to Stephen or oh, maybe if she's she was got a question mark. questioning about it or if she, it was, maybe she's wondering who Dobby was is. A jinx at the exact same time. No, do you see that? She's she's got a question mark after her Dobby. So maybe she's like, who's Dobby? Okay, but yeah. he did say jinx, so maybe it came oh. up at the same time for him. <laughs> That could be. So, I'm overthinking this. Oh, well, yeah. But I would like you to speak in Dobby's voice. No. Oh, yeah. sorry, I've guys. Been, I've I tried. How about you? How about you? You do it first. No. Uh, I, I'm doing it in my head to think about, and it sounds like Jar Jar Binks in my head. Well, I, I, I could see that. I'd have to practice it. Okay. Uh, how about Grover Ooh, in an inflatable ginormous love Grover, flamingo? Grover, Kelly. Like yeah. That, Kelly. He's so cute. 
Uh, Kelsey says, thanks, Kim. That's a huge right. compliment. I'll have to send you a picture of when I dressed as Ariel for Halloween. Oh, there you see? go. See? There you go. If I, you know, you I'm, know. Right? I just felt it. I did not know you were Ariel. So yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I knew it. Penguins. Uh, penguins. That, that penguins. would be fun. I bet mm -hmm. Jenna would agree. I bet a lot of people would agree. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I agree with Christy. I would want to hand out, hang out with an otter. Right? Mm -hmm. We saw three otters on our property. Not, yeah. Not on the property, but on the in the water, and they and I put this in my whimsy Wednesday today actually, and they were they swam the whole length of our property, and the seagulls followed them. Yeah. That was we when we kind of lost them visually, we could just look at the Follow seagulls, the seagulls and yeah. they were tracking them, which uh, we were guessing because maybe they thought they would have fish like. They would be eating fish. No. We're like, they don't want to eat the otters. No. Leave them alone. No. Leave them alone. Sarah Sharon right? says, a liger. Breadford's skills and <laughs> magic. I know. You're going to do it. Are you guys having a killer time? <laughs> Heck yes, I did. Babe, oh, well, that would good. be cool. Yeah, Jennifer mm -hmm. knows Dobby. Okay. I, I, well, I, I knew kind of figured, Dobby. but some people just are like, I haven't watched Harry Potter. You uh, know? Dave Timmerman. That would be Aww. the creature that... Uh, Wow! Again, again I, I'm pretty sure this is Walt, not Linda. Uh, I wonder why you wrote Although maybe, Dave. maybe it was Mom. Maybe she's going to want to swim with, with I Dave. Know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dave says I would swim with Linda. Oh. And Walt. There we go. You guys. It seems like there's a work that out. There's a That's summer fun. happening here. A little summer shenanigans in Edgerton, Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, we will yes. uh, we will pick a winner. You can keep those coming in. We'll pick a winner at the end of the show. Uh, was it Kristen Haney? Was she last week's winner? Was she that... was, and I did not tell her because because oh, you're a bad person. I okay. well currently am a bad person. I'm trying to do better, so I will tell her. Or if she's watching, congratulations, Kristen. <laughs> Oh, am I that disappointing to you? I'm heartbroken. It's been 98 <laughs> shows, you guys. I, I'm first bound one, to forget first something. First one we've ever biffed on. <laughs> uh, what do you know? All right. Well, Aww. we are getting to an end. Uh, as we said, uh, next week, going to want to tune in for this one, you guys. Number 99, season finale. Uh, it's going to be a good one. It'll be some shocking. Shocking. Yeah. There will be some shock little, and awe. It will be a little shocking. Might even be a little emotional, actually. And I don't uh, know if I'm ready for that. Jenna is working on an, an additional surprise yes. that we're working excited very hard to on. unveil. So mm -hmm. it's not one to be missed. After that, we will be taking a uh, summer break, and when we come back from that, it's uh, it's going to be different. We got some different things. We got some big exciting changes planned. And uh, you will want to know when we have show number 100, believe you me. And uh, one of the best ways to do that is to be part of our community. And one of the best ways to do that is to log on to escapeadulthood.me. Mm -hmm. It is the Escape Adulthood League. It's our free online community. Uh, it's sort of like Facebook without all the politics and hatred and <laughs> vile garbage. Um, just the and good stuff. sponsored posts. Just the good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, your creepy high school boyfriend who stalks you. He's not, he's not on there. Is he stalking you? No. Your creepy high school boyfriend? No, it's for a friend I know. A friend I know <laughs> has that problem. Uh, uh, so check that out, escapeadulthood.me. And prescription this week, you know what? Pay attention. Open your eyes. Amazing things are happening all around you. I know that sometimes we look around and we see all the bad stuff. There's some pretty amazing things happening too. You just gotta you gotta look for them. All right. So uh, that is it for this show, right, Kim? Yes, it Until is. Until next time, adult fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome.